Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be talking about the message routing. Basically, the functionality of MTP3 layer related to message routing. That's a, an important functionality for the MTP3 layer. Uh, at the counterpart of uh, OSI model, we have IP layer at the layer 3 that handles the routing and uh, in ip domain this routing is done by uh, uh, done by the ip address using ip address so basically the ip address forms the uh, what you can say the main uh, unit for addressing the connected entities in the internet similarly in the ss7 network we have point codes point codes uh, give uh, are basically the address of uh, entities in the SS7 network. Now these entities could be in the national domain, it could be in the international domain and uh, depending on the, the, the caller, depending on the called party or the destination uh, of the signaling point, each routing points are appropriately used. So let's suppose uh, the signaling points A and D, they are uh, they they are being being connected. So basically, A is trying to send uh, a message to D. Message here is the signaling unit. Uh, now this signaling unit, in order to send, uh, A will have to put the destination point code in the signaling unit. And if these two points are directly connected, then uh, it's just a matter of uh, looking up the routing table in the ACE routing table and finding out the link that connects directly to D and the message is sent directly to D point. And at the D, uh, at the D signaling point, the message is extracted by MTP1 layer, then MTP2 layer and passed on to MP MTP3 layer. MTP3 layer, uh, depending on the uh, MTP3 layer will, will basically check if the destination point code belongs to itself and if it does then it basically extracts the message and sends it to the higher layers. Now here A and D both are connected via, uh, via a signaling link which is directly connected. So this kind of mode of communication is called associated mode. Now that's not a practical scenario for for all the all the all the nodes across the SS7 network because it will be a huge combination if you try to connect each signaling point to every other signaling point in the network. So what we do is we basically uh, we basically connect two endpoints via set of routers. Now these uh, routers or relayers that exist between the two entities they uh, they also work at the mtp3 layer now uh, the, but the but the main task for them is to just to do the routing so like here in this scenario if suppose a and d they are not directly connected then uh, then there has to be few other units in between them uh, to basically let the message pass okay they will be acting like a router for this message so here in this example b and c are the are the interim nodes which will receive the signaling unit from a and pass it on till d so uh, each node has a routing table that basically uh, that basically decides based on the destination point code decides which link set to be used for sending the signaling unit so uh, in the ace routing table for the destination point code of d the best option would be to basically send it to the b party okay so this message will be sent to the b party and the mtp3 layer of b will receive the message it will uh, decipher that this destination point code doesn't belong to it so it will basically act like a router and it will send 
the message to the next optimum hop so in the in the routing table of b uh, against the the destination point code of d it will have the next hop as the c so the message will be sent to the c party because b is also not directly connected to d in this way c will also have to check in the routing table that the message now here in this case c and d is directly connected so the routing table of c will show the direct link to the d party in this way the message will be transferred from a to d via these two b and c networks uh, at the at the destination at the d signaling point the message will be extracted by the signaling point by the mtp3 layer and it will be sent to the higher layers now <clears throat> in this scenario all these endpoints they belong to the to the net national ss7 network now these point codes they can exist in the national national network as well as in the international network so to correctly address each point code in the international network we have uh, we have one extra field in the mtp3 layer which is called national indicator that is ni field ni field apart from the point code so uh, if the ni field is is a, a particular value i think 00, zero then it means it's an international code and uh, then the call will be routed to the then the, then the message will be sent to the international uh, point codes whereas if it is one then it will be sent to the to the national point code so here it was example of national uh, national routing uh, national routing you can compare it to uh, normal normal local calling or std calling whereas international point code will come into picture when this call uh, will be via uh, will be an isd call also so in that case uh, the point code destination point code has to be in the other country now suppose this was an international call and b and c were not directly connected via via the national network so what will happen then it has to go via international it has to go via international point code so the international international ss7 network comes into picture so it's a it's a set of connected point codes so you can consider uh, the in, uh, the the national national uh, ss7 network you can compare it to be similar to a country okay uh, so let's say the country is united states canada mexico and brazil so they have their own ss7 networks each country has their own ss7 network and in order to facilitate the call among themselves they have the international point code also now these international point codes they are also maintained by these national partners so they are connected via international gateways okay so each country will have a, a set of international gateways that will basically facilitate call originating from that number no, from that country to the international to the international domain so uh, there will be an international gateway in the ssm network that will have address in both the national domain as well as international domain in the national domain it will be used for uh, uh, for receiving the packets from the national entities and then for sending it across the international domain it has to have the international point code also for example here the call uh, the signaling unit from a uh, first it will be sent to b and then from b it will be sent to b dash from b dash to c dash b dash and c dash they are part of international ss7 network and then from c dash to c and c to d now here you'll see that this b and b dash c and c dash they are actually not separate physical entities they are actually the same physical entity 
but they have two addressing systems they have two point codes one for the international domain and one for the national domain so when a sends the message to b it uses the the national point code of of that system whereas when it finds out that it has to go via international international uh, point code it will be sent with the point code of b dash to the international territory and after that it will be received by the internet uh, it will be received by the international gateway of c country and from there the message will go to c and to d so these inter international gateways they are basically facilitator of these messages across the across the globe 